I do have to say that the things that I've always done, like even going back to like my young love years is I've written letters that I've never given to them. And that's always helped me release it and have closure from within. Um, for the jerks that broke my heart, I've wrote a really bad poem about them. And, <laughs> and that like literally made me feel so good. I don't mean to laugh. A poem? Oh, yes. You a, wrote poem. a whole poem? Yes. You had poem. that's petty. You had the time to rhyme your anger. It it just came naturally. <laughs> what? Honestly, You're naturally a poet. Yeah, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Read it to them. No. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When you started to write it, did you know it was gonna be a poem? I've always like written stuff, like even the poem I read you the other day, like stuff like that helps me. I've always no, been I, like I, that. I know, but when you started to write it, did you think like this is going to be a poem? Yeah, because I've always wrote poetry. You always rhymed when you journaled? No, it was just poetry. Like you're not going to understand. I yeah. just, I didn't know if every time you wrote it out, you were like. Um, Poems have helped what's, me. What's the Broadway show that went, <laughs> yeah. that went crazy? Um, where the white yeah. guy was rapping. Hamilton. Yeah. I don't know if every time you were healing, you were Hamilton. Yeah. Shea Hamilton. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the poetry for me. It's like, I, I, I understand. You wrote me a poem. It feels one, good. One. Okay, but still. You made it sound like every time you had something in your mind, you were like, nah, no. you were like a lyricist. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out. I, In fact, I was like a business when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Same outfit, same night. <laughs> Still here. Still rolling. Okay. You had a long working day, babe. Yesterday was, actually. <laughs> today, what did you do today that you seem so exhausted the sun, over? The sun. I, you know, when you're in the sun oh all day, God. wipes you out. Um, It's also 9.20 at night. You know? <laughs> I usually record this late. Had the whole day on me. Okay. Today's topic is a big one. It's uh, one that we can all relate to. And it's also one where we may all have different ways to handle it. <laughs> Maybe we can't relate to yeah. the process of it because we all operate differently. But how to deal with a breakup. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I don't even know which button it is on the road. <laughs> um, <laughs> how to do it with a breakup? Uh, I don't even know if I'm the right person because I think I feel like I kind of just. Would you like a blanket? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I only have this blanket on because like I'm barefoot. My toe is like on hurting so bad i'm not trying to show the dogs in the camera if this was just you an audio your, podcast you I call your care. toes dogs yeah dogs are barking you know what do you call them do your feet look like that celebrity that went Liz viral Khalifa, yeah who i took hot yoga with <laughs> no <laughs> but anyways i'm sat here with a blanket would you like a blanket honey? no i'm okay. okay how to deal with a breakup um Gosh, allow yourself to go through it. I think the more you try to suppress what you're feeling, brush it under a rug, get busy. Busy is always, it's nice, but you also want to make sure you're actually allowing yourself to process through the, those emotions so you don't trap them inside. Can you give us like a story time? A story time? Yeah. I feel like you just like were shooting off advice. I want to know more about like Shannon during a breakup i think i will allow myself to go through the emotions no no um, like like a real life experience oh a real story gosh i can give mine yeah you can give yours you can think about yours i'm trying to think take your time i don't know if i want to highlight for me um my typical ways of dealing with a breakup were to um blame <laughs> <laughs> for sure <laughs> to start i'd blame the other person it wasn't me it was them on some like yeah but 
you a would lot. call I bet you'd call your mom, your sister, it's like you would talk to everybody about it. Anyone who would listen. <laughs> I already know you're chatty catty. <laughs> no, I would definitely blame. Um I had a hard time taking ownership and accountability for a long time. And um I just thought my way was the right way. And I thought I had the relationship answers figured out. And that person just didn't see it like that. And so unfortunately, I would blame a lot, mm -hmm. which then allowed me to lie and tell myself a whole different story than what a large part of the reality actually was. And in my wrongdoings within the breakup and why we broke up. Um, but that was part of it. It was like a coping mechanism was to blame. The other thing I would do. Um, Were you convincing yourself, too, that it really was like not yeah, are, like subconsciously sure. you're 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 no. blaming subconsciously and consciously i was like it's them not me so <laughs> you you deep down knew it was like you were part of the problem no I, i'm telling you, I, I subconsciously i was like it's them not me that's how way off mm -hmm. i was unfortunately um the next thing i would do is out of sight out of mind mm -hmm. i would delete photos if you're on yeah. my instagram i would take you down it was like a like a deep cleaning <laughs> that <laughs> night <laughs> um you'd erase them yeah basically um sadly and i think part of the reason why i would out of sight out of mind it is because i i just wanted to like not feel the pain i guess you know um and not not mm -hmm. dwell on it yeah um not to say i wouldn't try to come back now because i would <laughs> A stranger text, you know, all this rain in L.A. makes me think about, <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <laughs> oh you know what I'm God. saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, so um, I would move on very quickly. <sighs> That's for sure. I, if not, yes, I would move on very quickly. Yeah. Um, and... You know, if I'm being honest, a part of I'm young, right? At this point, what I'm referring to is like young. Was, was I part of? I was gonna say, you, was I part no, of your? Move I'm talking on like really late quickly teens, because early twenties, mid twenties. But I was, you were still carrying that over because I was a move on pretty quickly person for you. Actually, for my timeline, you weren't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe for someone else's average timeline, for my timeline, you were not. Yeah. Um, but again, um. I would move on quickly. Uh, oh, I was going to say part of the moving on quickly was for sure to like get back at my ex, you know, in, in some yeah. way, just, just petty and immature and whatever. <laughs> um, and here's, here's where like, I, I realize now where a lot of stuff went south. Um, as I've said so often on this show, I was taking the same me into a new relationship, expecting new results. So finally, when I met the Portuguese lover, camera right, I would realize all of those things that were coming up in my past relationships were also coming yeah. up today. And I was like, damn, like, I'm the common denominator. And it was that was the first time I remember being like, oh, shit. Instead of pointing the finger at them, I had to point mm -hmm. the finger at myself. And that accountability would set in and and the guilt and and um uh, what's the word not forgiveness but like i would feel really bad for my exes i don't know mm -hmm. why i'm blanking on that word um <laughs> but i would like so much in fact i like thought about writing them you know whether it's an email a text or calling or like yeah you know me i'm an in-person person i was like i could just meet up with, you know but i was like yeah. i just felt so bad i felt so remorseful was that was word. a cycle that you would go through i was looking for it. yeah when i was really healing and understanding like yeah. what if idiot i was yeah. um in a lot of ways and, and a complete asshole um inconsiderate selfish yeah. i can go on and on but i i felt so bad and i mm -hmm. i really wanted to like at least give them that mm -hmm. for whatever it was worth and i realized it, it might do more damage than good and i've struggled with it for a while actually um especially with a certain one and so um and I, I guess part of my reason to uh, my remorse and, and why I wanted to give mainly her that um, 
I, I don't want this to come a- sound wrong or come across bad, but um, I felt like I know her so well that I felt like I needed to give her this as like a release. Mm-hmm. Like, like it wasn't you. Did you ever? No. Oh. No. And uh, I just, I, I felt like I owed it to her. And it's the least I could do to, to like, you know, hopefully make that reference point not as shitty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, if there was any insecurities that I created within her, I want her to know, like, I created them within you. Don't mm-hmm. don't change who yeah, you yeah. are. And, and so on and so forth. Uh, but all that to say, um, through taking this accountability and these, these looks in the mirror, I would I was so remorseful and mm-hmm. um, really, really, really sorry. And, um, but, but, you know, th- that's how I used to deal with breakups in a shitty way, in a, in a very messed up way. If I could go back and tell my younger self, um, this is what I would Sh- say. Let me ask you that question. Cause I feel like I'm, there's no banter happening. Yeah. Just I, so, cause I, I'm like like, I was journaling. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I feel like I was journaling for a second. I was my bad. <laughs> I was like, sh- I'm like, am I here? It was, it affected me. <laughs> It had a major impact on me. All so, right. So, so if you can go back and tell yourself something, what advice would you give yourself? Part of the interruption, just wanted to hop in here really quick for a couple reminders. The first reminder is the merch is available and it is back better than ever. I have some beautiful, super dope new designs, especially with the gratitude for the win, therapy for the win, and the vulnerability and normalizing that for men. Those three designs are brand new. I personally love them and I'm really excited to showcase them to you guys and and I'm hoping you have the same feeling that I do. So you can go get those right now at justindavis.life. That's justindavis.life. Of course, the link will be in the description below whether you're listening or watching this. But again, just a friendly reminder, still merch out here. Got some long sleeves, got some crew neck sweatshirts, got some hoodies, got some t-shirts, whatever you need, whatever climate and season you're in. By the way, this time, as I switch some stuff around, shipping. I repeat, shipping worldwide. So all the international followers and the, and the beautiful supporters of the community, I'm sorry about the past. But it's a new day. You get your merch too. It costs you a little pretty penny because shipping overseas apparently is crazy expensive as I <laughs> came to find out. But nonetheless, we are now shipping internationally. So justindavis.life, go get yours, support your boy, and spread the message. Some beautiful ones out there. Back to the episode. If you were like your older Mm -hmm. brother to your younger self. Find the lesson, first and foremost. Find the lessons, plural, um, in case there are more than one, which I'm sure there are. Accept responsibility. Are you asking me and answering? Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to have some banter here. I feel I like <laughs> find the lessons because nothing is a loss. Nothing mm-hmm. is a mistake. Everything is a lesson. Um, yes, I would take accountability. I would take ownership in as many possible scenarios and ways and experiences that I could. Um, I would not burn the bridge <laughs> on my way out. That's another thing that I, I did. Like my, mm-hmm. my relationships ended horribly um my fault um and I, w- I would not burn that bridge i would definitely offer more empathy and compassion and be sensitive to their emotions and their mm-hmm. feelings because god i was yeah. i did not do that um i would respect their healing process as well like i said w- when i would come back when i would um it was selfish mm-hmm. for sure. And I would, I would sales you sales menu. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would sell you, but I would sales menu, um, all the way, mm-hmm. you know, and tell you the things that you want to hear knowing I know what you want to hear. And it was just selfish. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely respect your healing process and mm-hmm. your, your time. And, um, another thing I think I would do too is, is I, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. more <laughs> i'm telling you honey I, like <laughs> it, it sucks i i i don't regret much mm-hmm. but i really regret the way i handled a lot of my breakups yeah uh, it's a big regret and it weighs heavy on me but um 
Another thing that I would do is I would find out if there's a way to fix th- whatever was mm-hmm. happening. Because as soon as I felt like I'm either not in control, I can't trust you, or this yeah. might be a waste of time, I would jump ship, right? I've always said like mm-hmm. that one foot in, one foot out. That foot out would be heavy. Yeah. And, and I wish I would have just opened up a conversation, an mm-hmm. opportunity to discuss how are you feeling? Are you feeling the same way? I'm yeah. And I didn't, un- unfortunately. Yeah. So... <laughs> I feel like you need to have an episode where maybe it's like a letter to your exes without saying names. Yeah. Because clearly like that, this could have been just your episode. (laughs) Yeah. That's, I mean, I've I've actually thought about that. Um, But yeah. I think for me, I obviously haven't been in, in as many relationships as you have. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them was super, super long ago. And I was a young, young high pup. school <laughs> yeah, <Young pup. laughs> girl. So I don't really know. But I do have to say that the things that I've always done, like even going back to like my young love years, mm-hmm. is I've written letters that I've never given to them. And that's always helped me release it mm-hmm. and have closure from within. Um, for the jerks that broke my heart, I wrote a really bad poem about them. And, <laughs> and that like literally made me feel so good. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. A poem? Oh, yes. You a wrote poem. a whole poem? Yes. A whole you had, poem. That's petty. You had the time to rhyme your anger. It it just came naturally. <laughs> what? Honestly. You're naturally a poet? Yeah. I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Read it to them. No. <laughs> But it was actually really good, and it was so healing for me. I remember, no, yeah, I actually sure. remember the day that I, f- I, I wrote two, or the day I finished one of my poems. It just felt like a release. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've told no, you this. I'm only laughing because I know you, and, and but I get, I get the form well, of it's like healing. I understand. Regardless if it's poetry, if it's a letter, <laughs> right. um, that has always helped me. That has always allowed me to have a release in it. Mm-hmm. It's offered me peace and it's helped me to move on. Yeah. Like again, when I, as funny as it sounds, like when I think about the day that I wrote that poem, <laughs> it literally was like, I felt so good. Sure. It was you know, as heartbroken as I was, it, it offered me healing. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so that wait, 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 when you started to write it, did you know it was going to be a poem? I've always like written stuff. Like even the poem I read you the other day, like stuff like that helps me. I've always no, been I, like I, that. I know. But when you started to write it, did you think like, this is going to be a poem? Yeah. Cause I, I've always okay. wrote poetry. You always rhymed when you journaled? No, it was just poetry. Like you're not going to understand but it's like even when my grandma passed away i wrote a poem no i listen i know you work really well in the healing in your healing process with writing things out i get it i just i didn't know if every time you wrote it out you were like um poems have helped me what's the broadway show that went (laughs) went crazy um where the white guy was rapping hamilton yeah i don't know if every time you were healing you were hamilton yeah shay hamilton perhaps See, this is, these are raw conversations. Like this is something that he either forgot or I didn't tell him. I'm pretty sure I told you all this. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the poetry for me. It's like, I, I, I understand. You wrote me a poem. It feels one, good. One. Okay. But still. You made it sound like every time you had something in your mind, you were like, nah, no. you were like a lyricist. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out. I have raps too. Good for you. <laughs> it's great. Um, no, yeah, go ahead. writing has always helped me. Yes. Um, I, in fact, I was like a business when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> if you were drinking something at that moment, you would have spit it all out. What kind of business did you have? Like when my friends were going through, <laughs> when my friends were going through a breakup. Like, I used to write the letters for them to their exes. What? Yeah. That's messed up. <laughs> what? That's plagiarism. No. <laughs> plagiarism. <laughs> what if, okay, if if I was dating your girl, 
your homegirl. Yeah. And you wrote a letter and I was like, oh, my God, your letter was so touching. Yeah. Jessica. Well, and, it was basically I, I like, just, I can't so believe that's how you feel. And she's like, let me see that letter real quick. Like what? No. So this is how it would go. They wanted to communicate how they felt to whoever right. their person was. And they didn't know how to curate the words. Would they so, write it with you? Yes. Okay. So we would sit together. They would tell me everything that they okay. wanted to say. Got it. And I would write it for them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's better. <laughs> I was gonna but I used say. to do that for so many friends. Like we used to get together and they would tell me everything that's going on, what they want to say. Did you think and you I were would, really cool. Yeah, I was a really good writer. My like I had an English even my English teacher <laughs> <laughs> used to always comment. <laughs> Wait, this is not why, why weren't you a writer? I don't know. Even when I was in college, I had a business major, obviously. And I, I mean, obviously, well, cause you know, oh yeah. Do you mean like it's no, okay. Go ahead. I had my business cause I'm saying it as if you don't know, but you know, yeah. I'm more saying it for the got camera, it, it. but I had a business major and I remember my English teacher was like, you should change your major to writing <laughs> opposition. So why didn't you? I, I don't know. I just didn't. What am I going to do with that? You could wrote books. Yeah, I don't Love know. books, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> like novels. Poems. Yeah. Yeah. You could have your own speakeasy. Maybe. At that time, I was just like, I was on my entrepreneur vibe. Deaf poetry back in the day. Yeah. Huh. But so that has helped me. <laughs> also. Even if you can't do poetry, you should still journal. Yeah. It yeah. allows you to really go through the no, feelings I, yeah. that you have. I think yeah. there's something poetic about there you go. that transition from your thoughts to words. 100%. And I think that there's a lot of healing power in that. Mm -hmm. And that's what it did for me. So I've always stuck to it. Like whenever I'm going through something, a good poem <laughs> saves the day. I hey, know. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I want to give a quote right now. <laughs> I'm serious. I do. Wait, hold on. I have the perfect quote for this moment. At least my in stuff dealing, is original. In dealing with a breakup. Um, <laughs> all seriousness. <laughs> this doesn't rhyme, so it's not poetry. But um, I want, I want, it's serious. I want everyone to pay attention to this. Um, my Chicago therapist gave me this a um, couple months ago, and it really resonated with me. And it's, it's very... Perfect timing. Not all storms come to disrupt your life. Mm -hmm. Some come to clear your path. Mm -hmm. So in terms of a breakup, if you feel like this storm is just a complete disruption in the end of your world and your life as you know it, believe it or not, there's another perspective and there's light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And this could actually be the storm that clears your path. Um, so just keep that in mind and um, let it marinate because I, I think it will hopefully help some people out. Pardon the interruption, part two. Right now I wanted to come in and talk about what you continue to hear me talking about throughout this episode and this season, which is the consultations that I offer. Consultations with JD may or may not be for you, but if they are for you or you're thinking, can they be for me? Let's go over what entails consultation with JD. First off, it's one-on-one -on -one between you and I, or you and I and Shay, if you'd like, or better yet, you, your partner, me, and Shay. Now, I record every single session via Zoom because of this main reason. You're not gonna have to worry about what I said, what you said, what Shay said, what we came up with. You can just focus, and when I send you the recording after the session's over, you can play the recording back, listen to it, watch it as many times as you'd like, to soak up all the information that we got throughout that session. Lastly, I'm going to read a couple of different reviews that I've had from my clients. I thought I'd share just again so you can get an idea of what's the session like with JD. My consultation with JD was a great experience. He allowed me to see my situation from a different point of view, which was very helpful, even more so than my therapy sessions. Sessions with JD can't be described in one word, so I'll use a few. Informative, understanding, deep, sobering, realizing, inspirational, kind, and growing. He shows up just as much as I do, if not more. It's a safe space where I can be myself. He will challenge you to help you grow at your own pace. And you wouldn't think that someone who doesn't know you at all 
can help you learn about yourself in just a couple sessions. JD is an incredibly skilled coach. He has such an easy way of connecting with you and making you feel seen and understood, yet he isn't afraid to challenge you and hold you accountable. We got right to it our first session, and I walked away with tactical next steps to take towards my goals. You get the sense he has really done the work for himself and is excited to share with others. I can't wait to work with him further. So again, a couple beautiful reviews from some amazing people, ones who I really admire to show up to do the work because it's not easy. But again, you don't have to do it alone. So consultations with JD, the link is in the description below. I'm here when you're ready to get to work. Back to the episode. And that's why I think, too, like if you during all your breakups, instead of moving on to the next chick or being in denial or having the blame gain game happen, I think if you would have wrote down <laughs> what you were feeling, <laughs> you would have recognized quicker that you were the problem. No, I I'm t- so. honey, I thank you. But I'm telling unless you, you're you're what you would have wrote. I would have been was angry. The blame exactly. game. <laughs> you didn't do this like a pros cons list would have been all cons. <laughs> Yeah. Um, unfortunately. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. The irony here, though, however, of you see how I handled breakups and you see how you handled breakups. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, somehow we found each other. But, uh, you know, I've I've didn't need to know all the, the um, rhyme fest you've been a part of and stuff like that. But I think. Um, Why? And in, in knowing how mature you've always been from from like a early age. Um, so it makes sense that you were able to handle breakups a lot better yeah. than I was. Um, and you've always had a really beautiful way of not taking things so personal. Um, I, I have a hard time with that. Mm-hmm. So I would I would. Uh, I think you have a hard time with it because you've you've built a storyline around everyone's out to get you. No. No. Mm. I've never thought that. No. Mm. I think it's just more so. Um, my storyline is, um, I would tell myself what I wanted to hear, and even if it wasn't the truth, just to sleep at night, just to. to but how do you not know deep down that that's not the truth? Like, how are you so good at convincing yourself of the lie? Like that's I'm very good at convincing myself of whatever. Um, but <laughs> that's like scary. <laughs> yeah, I have a very strong mental grip like that. But mm-hmm. back then, it was my norm. So like, when I so let's say the left side of my brain is is like yeah. this this uh, blame game side. When there would be a trigger that would arise and it'd be in the middle of my brain, it would go left real quick to go mm-hmm. to. It's not it's not you. It's them. Like to just feel like I was in control of the situation yeah. and like I wasn't going to get hurt. And it was so automatic. It was a default mode, a default mechanism. And my, I got it from my mom and I for sure got it from my dad as I get mm-hmm. to know him here yeah. later in life. Um, and I always say those two people had a baby and here I am. So uh, I'm, I, I'm naturally built like that. So it's been a, a, a lot of work to undo a lot of that, to unlearn mm-hmm. a lot of that. And now when you and I have conflict or a friend, you know, I'm in conflict with a friend or a family member, I'm able to take a step back now, Mm -hmm. respond instead of react, assess the situation as you taught me to see from their perspective and maybe their point of view first before I just do mine real quick. Um, And and a lot of these tools have helped me um, handle those situations a lot better. Mm -hmm. Can you attest to that? So I think the more you put that into like practice, practice yeah. the more um, uh, def- the more of that will become your default. default. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and it, it has, um, especially lately with life, lifing. Um, <laughs> so the shit that I've had to deal with lately. Oh, yes. So. You know, I've I handled a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, even like I think too, like I've I've noticed you're more accepting of yeah. other like people's actions, 
and versus before I felt like you, you would allow their actions to like spin you out Mm -hmm. and you would go down this rabbit hole and all that rabbit hole would do was get you more angry, more worked up. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, you're like, it happens. And then you're like, huh? And then you're like, huh? (laughs) How? (laughs) (laughs) And then, huh? Like you keep, (laughs) you just keep walking about your day. (laughs) Yeah. Like, hmm, that was fucked up. All right. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I mean, you know, my one of my favorite quotes, control, it's in your control, has a lot to do with that. Yeah. Um, Knowing that people are going to show you who they are, it's up to you yeah. whether or not you want to believe them. And I've lately just been believing the shit out of them. And I'm like, cool, no problem. I'll keep it moving. Um, in conclusion, for me again, Find the lessons, be empathetic and sensitive to the other person's feelings and emotions. Um, Try to still show up as a support system. Maybe you can work Mm -hmm. it out. Maybe you can't. But if you can't, um, handle it in a a mature, still loving, respectful Mm -hmm. way. Um, If you move on quickly like I did... You will take the same you into a new relationship and get this. Not same only that, or results. you'll just suppress what you're feeling for it. If you're on the other end of moving on too quickly after you just had your heart broken and you weren't like the actual, you were more of like the victim in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Moving on too quickly in that aspect is just going to suppress what you feel. And you're going to just be inserting that person to fill the hole that you have. Yep. And, and to try to fill that void, which only you can do. Mm-hmm. Also found that out. <laughs> um can't fill voids with people who knew Mm -mm. um you can try it's just not everlasting yeah and then all temporary yeah and then again lastly that quote you know that storm may actually be here to clear your path not to disrupt your life and the beauty is you have the choice you can let it disrupt your life and and the future relationships that you may get involved Mm -hmm. with or you can choose to let it clear your path yeah and um see clearly now that the rain is gone Mm -hmm. what you got love i think the same thing like taking responsibility kind of looking at it from the other set of lens Mm -hmm. um seeing where whether you were the victim or not seeing where you can grow from it Mm -hmm. and be better um i also feel talking about it is great and just having some some form of, of release, whether it's talking about it or writing a poem. <laughs> and um, allow yourself to really go through those, those emotions. Allow yourself to feel all the emotions that will allow you to release them and move on from it. And, and yeah, time heals all, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think be intentional, too, with this breakup. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're breaking up because you're trying to run from something be mindful of that if mm-hmm. you're breaking up because you're afraid that the the truth of how you feel or what you think or, or what you want to say is not something that they're going to receive be mindful of that mm-hmm. maybe they will be able to receive it well maybe yeah. they've been thinking the same thing you've been thinking um and i think also just um be intentional with and and respectful of people's feelings mm-hmm. something that i sadly did not do Mm -hmm. um because you'd be surprised how long people can carry (laughs) that weight Mm -hmm. Um, could be a long time yeah and i think we all need some sort of closure in a breakup yeah and i think closure doesn't always have to come from the other person it can come from within Mm -hmm. yep that's what i would leave at so all right well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to know what that means. I know. You'll have to send that clip to y- Yvette yeah. and Clark. Yeah. Okay. That's it. You made it through part one, season three. Congrats. I'm proud of you. I hope you had plenty of takeaways. I hope these lessons and these gems and these vulnerable, raw conversations really helped you, especially when it comes to your relationship. Part of why I wanted to just have Shay on for for this 
at least this part of season three was because I know what, what the demand is when it comes to my community. And I know Shay and, and I are, are of high demand when it comes to just us being together and kind of the ins and outs of our relationship. So I thought, let's just create a whole eight episodes just around those <laughs> same topics. Um, when it comes to the topics, I, I really sat with them and, and, and thought about them and researched about them. And I, and I thought, you know what, this is going to be a really good chapter in, in the who can relate book, if you will. So thanks again for watching this part one. Part two will be coming very soon. I'm really excited. Again, Shay and I will come on as co-host, but this time with a guest, with some experts, some friends, some licensed professionals, you name it couple of tricks up my sleeve and I think they're going to be extremely, extremely helpful in guiding you through not only your journey in life, especially when it comes to relationships. So from now until then, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I can't thank you enough for all your continued support, encouragement, and just showing up, showing up for yourself, showing up for me, showing up for us. Thanks for showing up. I'll see you soon. Enjoy your summer. Be good. Don't do anything I wouldn't do when I was single. See you soon. Took me back there for a second. I was like, what was that? <laughs>